plans to short yen and copper and go long ASEAN banks. Why is that? Well, uh, the, the yen just does seem to want to go down and certainly the uh, the government in Japan is uh, is keen to get it down even further. So um, we, we're pr pretty confident that the yen will fall. Uh, we think there's some good reasons for it to fall uh, and we expect clients are making money by shorting the yen. Copper's slightly different. Uh, we, we're looking at much weaker global growth than the, the consensus and a slowdown, further slowdown in China and India this year, uh, which are two of the big consumers of copper. So. We think it's right to be short copper as well. But the place where the growth is, is, is ASEAN, um, whether it's Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand or Malaysia, the ASEAN four are uh, moving in the right direction. We think their companies look good. Uh, we think the credit cycle is in a significant upward cycle, which will last for the next two to four years. And therefore the ASEAN banks to us look like some of the best buys in Asia. And you're still holding on to your long positions in gold and U.S. equities at the expense of French equities. How would this strategy change going into the second half? The long gold won't change uh, as long as people like Mr. Bernanke and uh, now Mr. Kuroda and Mr. Carney at the Bank of England and Mr. Draghi at the ECB keep promising to debase their currencies uh, and print more and more paper. We will be long gold for as long as uh, central banking as we know it today is in, uh, is in place uh, because the only safe place to be is in an asset that isn't being debased on a daily basis. So the, the long gold strategy certainly won't change. We, we'll watch the, the US longs on equities. Uh, that, that might change going forward depending on how we see the US economy and effectively the profit cycle there. Uh, at the moment, we've been quite positive about the US and continue to be uh, relatively constructive about it. Uh, and so therefore, in comparison with all of the other developed countries, uh, we, we see the US equity market doing quite well. But our eyes are on that one, just in case there's a, uh, a renewed slowdown in the US economy. You downgraded Japan to underweight at the end of February and have kept it there even as the Nikkei has seen a strong run-up. What would you need to see now to reconsider your exposure to Japan? Yeah, we're underweight and it's underweight for that reason of uh, uh, that the equity market is dependent on a weakening currency. We're underweight equities in the sense that we, we think that that's um, a dangerous position to be in if the yen suddenly reverses. But let's say that the, the yen continues to, to depreciate, then the, the easier bet for, for all of us is basically just to be short the yen. Uh, rather than to have to put money into Japan to hopefully get some upside on the equity market. Um, I think it's going to be a long time before we change our position on Japan now, uh, given the policies that are, in, that are in place, which to us still look like being very incoherent, uh, inconsistent policies uh, in terms of trying to generate economic growth.